I'd just firstly like to acknowledge my, whoops, <laughs> the, uh, my uh, fellow authors on, uh, on this presentation. Uh, Jody Gates and Dan Rogers from the department, Jill Woodlands who was here from the Conservation Council, Greg Koch from PERSA and also uh, the, um, Paul Ryan from the Australian Resilience Centre and um, Ryan Hubbard from TAXI, the Australian Centre for Social Innovation is involved in this project as well. And a lot of other people, we've got some representatives from our NRM regions on our uh, working group as well. And I also wanted to thank Sandy Pitcher for mentioning this work in her opening um, address um, and for her giving us the permission to really think differently about nature conservation at this really strategic level and, um, and also for supporting such a collaborative approach. So I just wanted to start off by getting us into the mood of uh, really enjoying nature uh, as did you with your wonderful talk before us and um, this, uh, this video can be downloaded, you know, or not downloaded but can be uh, found on YouTube. Um, it basically takes us through some of the amazing places around South Australia, our diverse landscapes. Um, it's particularly uh, focused on our parks. Um, so I'd like to encourage you to all visit our parks. So the dust settled and I thought I'd be here forever Waiting at the station, hold my head up high Although I wonder what lies over What we wait for Reading people, places, times and thoughts and things that That's all you get, because I've got to do some talking um, you know, we all know that nature is not just in our parks, it's in our production landscapes. We also have nature in our urban scapes and in our townscapes. So we've got to consider all of this when we're talking about the nature of South Australia. No species loss was the first biodiversity or nature conservation strategy for South Australia released in 2007. It presented the first whole of government policy position on uh, South Australia's biodiversity, that of lose no species. There's also an associated South Australian strategic plan target, lose no species. There was a review that was conducted a couple of years ago. It was largely an internal Duna review, but it found like that this strategy really had what it takes to halt the decline of biodiversity in South Australia. It had really sound science. But it also found that you know, implementation is very difficult. There was no real formal implementation plan. And also it raised questions around lose no species, how appropriate is that? Uh, it's very, very aspir aspirational. So what happens? This is going to expire in 2017. So this is why we started talking about the nature for South Australia into the future. A little bit of policy context because I'm a policy person. Um, we know that jobs are really important for South Australia and we've got our seven strategic priorities. We can see nature in here. We can see that um, uh, people getting out into nature is really important for our health. We can see that uh, food, uh, quality of food, um, uh, we get a quality of food when it's produced in a clean environment. Climate change is really important and South Australia is uh, one of the world leaders in climate change mitigation and adaptation as um, testified by um, so many countries talking to us at the uh, conference in Paris last year in December. We've got an NRM system. Uh, it's delivered through eight regions. Uh, natural resource management is about integrated management of our biodiversity, our water, our soil. Now I want to move through into 
really we've got to also understand, so we've got the policy context and that really affects what we do, but our nature is changing. You know, we've got climate change that's really transforming our systems. It really is transformational. Not only have we had the past 200 years where things have really changed dramatically, um, we know that some species are thriving, but some are actually are declining and some will disappear. This really challenges our business as of, I've got to take a drink, business as usual approach. So this leads us to our project that we're working on. And we recognise business as usual is not working. Um, and we're trying to do things really differently. So when we're um, developing this really collaborative approach, we're bringing in the idea of the social systems and the ecological systems. They need to, decisions need to be made in working together. Um, resilience thinking, really important for um, climate change and uh, regions, the NRM regions are really in this space. Um, we're really challenging our current thinking about what is the philosophy of nature conservation in South Australia. This is a, the fundamental thing that we really want to um, um, challenge people on. And then uh, identify our assumptions and the biases that we're working on. And then think about what really is possible, what really is achievable. And then come up with a revised proposed policy position and strategies. And just got to uh, talk about the different stages that we're moving through. This is a very early stage where we set up our working group. We're working with the environment sector, but we are going to go a lot, lot broader. And we're going to start asking these questions uh, more widely in South Australia. So some of the main questions are around the current philosophy. So is a pre-European ideal is that still appropriate? Is lo lose no species still appropriate? And if we do accept that there's no going back, that we really can't restore, you know, climate change, it's so expensive, etc., then what do we want our new nature to look like? What does society want um, new nature to be? Uh, what Richard Hobbs calls uh, uh, novel ecosystems, and there's other names for it as well. What can people live? What can't they live without? And uh, what do future strategies need to do for nature to be successful? So, so far we've had a series of workshops um, and we've had some training on Common Cause, which is a revelation. If any of you get a chance to do Common Cause training, and I'll come to that in a minute. The other amazing seminar we had back at the joinery in uh, December uh, last year was with Richard Hobbs talking about grief and loss in the conservation sector. If you really, if you can't go back, uh, and a lot of people do want to go back, they do want to restore, but if you can't, that can trigger a profound sense of loss. And with a profound sense of loss, you have to go through a grieving process to really move forward. So he's, uh, Richard Hobbs does some amazing work. This is one of the... Um, uh, classic um, ideas behind Common Cause. And Common Cause says that if you appeal to people's benevolence and the deepest, deepest emotions and feelings within people, then they are more likely to become compassionate and to care, and to care about the environment. And uh, this is really uh, being taken up quite seriously and a lot of, uh, there's a lot of common cause training happening. So this is the intrinsic values up here and these are the extrinsic values that we, we uh, normally um, appeal to or try to appeal to, but we believe it's not working. So some of the emerging themes of the work so far. Um, so obviously this idea of new nature is very challenging to a lot of people. Uh, what is good science for new nature? What is, science, what is the good science for uh, climate change? How do you get governance and implementation right? Uh, the social license for governments to invest in, in, um, in biodiversity is, is really essential. And uh, is this perceived uh, low level of care 
by the community for nature. Is that actually real? Fascinating work you've done, by the way. Um, the environment sector needs to be more inspiring. We, we've worked that one out. And here is something that is really inspiring. This has really inspired us. Uh, Vic Nature has got this website and they've put climate change up front here and how important it is. And it's the most engaging website and uh, I urge you to go and check it out. So what's next? We're going to have more of these chats about our philosophy. Jody Gates is doing the chat, so look out for anything that you can see um, uh, that he sends out to you. More common cause training. We're going to have some theory of change workshops. We're going to be trials to set, testing some of our biases and assumptions. And you'll all be invited to a, uh, a forum, a Nature of SA forum later in the year. So I want to leave you with this. Um, I want you to think about the new nature. Um, I want you to think about getting involved in some of the, in developing future strategies. And for those of you who are scientists, I want you to think about what is good science for good new nature. And if you do want to get involved, you can uh, contact Jody Gates if you want to set up your own philosophy chats in, in your um, area. Um, he starts with the Richard Hobbs video, which is this one here. And if you go to this website here, TAXI, the Australian Centre for Social Innovation, Nature of SA, you can actually have a look at Richard Hobbs' talk from last December. Contact me if you'd like to be on our emailing list. And we post all our events on the Joinery's website. So, yeah, hope to see you sometime in the future. Thank you.